welcome my dear students of class 9a and 9b today i am going to teach you about the three persons today i am going to teach you about about the following points point number 1 you know the kalidasa the very important person during the age of the gupta empire you know kalidasa the eminent person and the beautiful uh, image he established as a good writer dramatist we shall discuss about it and second one the vishnu temple third one nalanda university and fourth one gupta administration these are the points today i shall clarify you and uh, in my previous class i discussed about the following points chandragupta 2 who was chandragupta 2 uh, kumara gupta who was kumara gupta who was kanta gupta i discussed about their uh, role how had they become famous and what was about uh, the informations had had they left for the next uh, kings of the gupta dynasty i discussed in my previous class now today i am going to discuss about kalidasa kalidasa was a famous famous you know uh, uh, writer dramatist and uh, a very skillful you know thinker before writing a number of you know uh, poems before writing a number of dramas kalidasa uh, kalidasa thought of the romanticism during that age the romantic things he applied in his uh, famous dramas in his poems the number of poems he wrote ritu sambhara uh, raghubamsa kumara sambhava meghaduta and so so these are the important poems kalidasa wrote and not only that kalidasa also influenced over the gupta kings by means of his qualities by means of his talents so these were the important raghubamsa ritu sambhara kumara uh, kumara sambhava and meghaduta these were the important poems kalidasa wrote and most uh, and all these poems he wrote in sanskrit language the dramatic verse for which he became famous vikrama varsham and vikrama varsyam avigana sakuntalam and malavika agnimittam so these were the most important dramas kalidasa wrote and he also narrated the romantic scenes and the romanticism of the two eminent uh, characters number 1 king dushmanta and uh, is and uh, his uh, wife you know sakuntala how they met themselves king dushmanta and sakuntala and in spite of being an ordinary class uh, how had he uh, chosen sakuntala to be his wife that is uh, in that is written in nice folk uh, in his famous you know Uh, drama origana sakuntalam that's why that that drama also had become very famous it is regarded that kalidasa created hero of malavika agnimittam who the image of chandragupta vikramaditya he he highlighted in which drama in malavika agnimittam besides kalidasa also you know tra- kalidasa uh, his idea the content whatever he had uh, whatever he had done in his famous poems in his famous dramas uh, was accepted by the people of all ages that's why the uh, the dramas the poems and all the writings of kalidasas kalidasa which was written in sanskrit these are translated in different languages of the world and hence kalidasa is compared to william shakespeare of england now next one and for here in description already i have described and next one alavat pila description that one also i described now the vishnu temple vishnu temple it was situated at deoghar and uh, it was constructed in 5th century ce and uh, during the reign of the gupta empire 
and uh, the temple was constructed in 6th century CE and was built of stone uh, measuring 1.5 meter, uh, 5 centimeter, uh, sorry, 1.5 meter in height and uh, tales from uh, Ramayana, tales from Ramayana adorn the outside, uh, uh, the outer walls of the temples and there was uh, ex uh, additional outer walls uh, which also uh, also constructed uh, and uh, also the main entrance, the pillars which are constructed by the Gupta rulers decorated with innumerable paintings and uh, paintings and carvings and uh, Lord Vishnu, the temple is presided by Lord Vishnu uh, who is known as Pizarva depicted <coughs> he is depicted to be sleeping on uh, the serpent the giant serpent that is coiled under with him and this giant serpent is known as ses naga this is the description of vishnu temple and next one another point that is nalanda university Nalanda University. The Guptas in my previous classes discussed about discussed that were fond of the growth of education, culture and cultural upliftment. That's why from the very very beginning the Gupta rulers Shanks and money for, for, for the construction of monasteries, viharas, viharas and monasteries were constructed from where uh, the sands taught the preachings and teachings of Buddhism. And besides the other uh, monasteries and viharas which were there from where the concept of Jainism was taught by the, by the sands. The Gupta rulers did not obstruct the obstruct did not obstruct the way of teaching because they are tolerant rulers. Naturally, the Gupta rulers uh, encouraged them to continue teaching from uh, viharas, from, uh, from viharas and from you know uh, monasteries. But later on, the Gupta rulers felt that uh, it was not uh, possible to teach all concepts from viharas or from monasteries because many distinguished people started uh, to receive education from different parts of the world that's why the Gupta rulers built many colleges universities throughout their empire and of this the Nalanda University at Nalanda in, at the district of Bihar at present uh, at the state of Bihar uh, had become very popular an educational as an educational institution of ancient age it uh, it had established its glory and image throughout the world kumara gupta one it is said that kumara gupta one established the nalanda university in 5th century ce the university had 10 temples and many classrooms a big library hall and meditation centers there was high wall uh, constructed a uh, high wall uh, you know, uh, throughout the university, and uh, only one, one main gate was there, and backside also one gate also was there. These two gates uh, uh, proved the uh, disciplinary method and the action which was followed by the uh, by the university management during the time uh, the Gupta rulers established it. There are many subjects taught by the distinguished teachers from these universities like you know hinduism grammar logic astronomy astrology and uh, uh, you know language these are the important uh, subjects taught at the nalanda university many buddhist monks used to come to receive education from this university and uh, in order to encourage the Buddhist ideals and Hindu philosophy. The Gupta rulers sanctioned a lot of money for the growth and development of this university. The university flourished under the rule of the Guptas and was patronized by Harsavardhana. You know, Harsavardhana, the famous ruler, 
after after the gupta age the harsavardhana came forward to protect the university and to patronize the concept of buddhism and the university of nalanda nalanda university for still 12th century ce but subsequently it faced destruction at the time when mohammad ghori uh, came to india and along with him uh, his follower also came who was he he was mohammad bin bakhtiyar khilji mohammad ghori got back to his own place but he appointed mohammad bakhtiyar khilji to be his uh, assistant to look after the areas where he established his control he occupied so for that reason mohammad bakhtiyar mohammad bin bakhtiyar khilji he is uh, he temporarily stayed in, stayed in india and while staying in india while staying there he destroyed the nalunda university the entire parts of nalunda university was destroyed by mohammad bin bakhtiyar khilji who was the general of whom who was the general of mohammad ghori mohammad ghori and on this ground the rest remaining you know ruins are still there exist but still the glory and image of nalanda university uh, will be uh, will be remembered will be kept in the mind of the people of the whole world still uh, it was one of the oldest university it was one of the most eminent universities in ancient india uh, whose glory and image uh, fame a reached far and wide and people different monks different distinguished people travelers used to come from different parts of india or the world to receive education from this university that's why nalanda university became one of the eminent universities of ancient india and the next point my next point gupta administration gupta administration you know during the gupta age the gupta the gupta rulers introduced a good system of administration and they all became famous because of his good administration the gupta the guptas established an admin, efficient administrative system and how number 1 what are the characteristic features of the gupta rulers number 1 in his india administration the village was the basic unit of administration and land revenue was the chief source of income of the state land revenue and second point king was the oh king was all powerful the king was uh, asked uh, to take decision independently that there was none to uh, force king to take decision but why why taking decision the king was a person Uh, could uh, uh, can advise uh, could advise uh, could take advice of his advisor minister and other responsible uh, uh, distinguished people like you know princes like you know zamadars and like other executive officers who are responsible uh, officers who generally shouldered many responsibilities the prince was the princes were appointed as the viceroys of provinces called bhuktis and the took they took the title of uparika maharaja and king the king himself assumed the title maharaja dhiraja the king assumed the title maharaja dhiraja during gupta age the administration was very strict because of the personal uh, personal care of the king himself since the king is the is all in all in his administration he appointed so many so many special officers to look after the condition of the people whether they were happy whether they had any problem whether the system of land revenue was collected uh, collected fairly whether the people uh, were practicing uh, practicing wrong things whether they were misguiding others whether the people were treated were being treated equally whether there was an equal system of treatment for each and every group of people in every sphere of life the king himself looked after 
the condition of the people so people was uh, people were happy people were rich people were prosperous during the gupta age because there was a system of good uh, there was a good system of agriculture the king himself provided a sufficient amount of money for the growth and development of agriculture for the growth and development of education for the growth and development of uh, of the entire parts of the country that's why during the gupta age there came all round development throughout the country they are established an all round development throughout the country because of the personal care and personal attachment with the administration by the king the king itself the king during the age uh, himself uh, uh, himself took uh, major decisions in case of uh, the you know in case of uh, uh, major issues the disputes which were not solved by other officers uh, it generally uh, would come under the court under the court of the king and king decided while taking decision he also uh, took advice of the distinguished uh, you know officers especially princes and other officers and they, then he decided what to do and what not to do but always decision uh, went in favor of the common people in favor of the people because there was none to be misguided and maltreated by the king that's why the administration of the gupta period had become very famous throughout the country and uh, afterwards another point that is very important that empire was divided into provinces each province was divided into a number of pradesha and then each district had its own administrative officials in the beginning i told you my dear students that during gupta period village was the uh, basic unit of administration the village was the unit of basic unit the village was the basic unit of administration and the king and land revenue was the chief source of income since there was um, there, there were huge acres of lands agricultural lands fertile lands that's why peasants uh, cultivated bulk quantity of crops bulk quantities of crops from their lands and they paid huge amount of revenues land revenues collected from them peacefully there was no problem while collecting taxes and land revenues taxes imposed on the peasants and farmers as per the as per the character of the uh, lands as per the fertility of the lands and they paid it because they had huge income there was no problem in uh, collecting uh, in the process of collection of taxes and revenues so uh, by this way the gupta period uh, introduced a good system of administration few points also are left next day i shall discuss about the next uh, the uh, next point the rest points of the gupta administration thank you my dear students